People are uh, already tuning in. Well, we are, hopefully the stream is fine, everything is set, should be relatively good. And I wanna let everyone know that the reason this stream is, at, is he going live or is this just a video? No, okay, so I didn't know that it was delaying this entire time, unfortunately. I do now. Hold on, maybe I could take these off. It, it, it's We're in the shade. It is a little bit hot here at the campgrounds of Eldora, but I'll tell you what. The reason we are able to even be live on the campgrounds of Eldora, anyone with the cell phone out here, you pretty much can't load Facebook without a, bu a bunch of luck. But, done right TV, at home, T-Mobile, 5G, internet. This is stuff that's meant to be at home but wink wink you can take it on to campgrounds and on the road and in your camper and in your race hauler and down the road and here there and the other so link is in the description check it out done right tv a big supporter of the racing world in general does a lot of live broadcast owns a streaming company actually as well met him in florida this last year and he does satellite and uh, security and mobile internet for a living and I am in agreement with them that this is the type of stuff that pretty much every camper should be utilizing, race team should be utilizing to be able to have internet connection at these huge events that we all love to go to. So check him out in the description. Also a big supporter of the shows this week, Buckeye Bitcoin, fuck the banks. I, I did say the F word if you are um, upset at that. Well, it is what it is. But BuckeyeBitcoin.com, try to get involved with the Eldor Million, but it, I mean, it was a million dollars to win the race. Now. I wanted to talk about the race. Um, what's your thoughts on that tower? Uh, I guess you're talking about the tower that I'm utilizing right now. It's amazing. It's working great. We are live. There's a little bit of a lag, but it, it works off a of cell connection like everyone else. It's just a big time amplifier. Regardless, hold on. Jazz is a Bilderberg club member. Okay, we got to turn off these comments because I can't really. Uh, well, never mind. We'll keep the. I'll try to just stay into the camera and saying what I want to say without reading these obnoxious comments by some of you people. But anyway, anyway, a um, million dollars was won by Logan Shuhart, and the Eldora Million is technically over right now. Will there be another one? Should there be another one? Will we see a week of instead of Eldora Million Kings Royal? Because I do think that the Kings Royal is going to somewhat suffer the next two days because of the big bang that the Eldora Million placed under this facility. Not only in the amount that it's paying, but also in the intelligence of the format. Adopting a late model style format to the sprint car world where the preliminary night was just as important as the final night that was ran. That was very important. You got to understand, like tonight for the Kings Royal, why are you watching? How is that affecting that 175000 tomorrow? Is it really at all? I would venture to say, no, it is not. So the, the need to be at the Friday night show uh, of the King's Royal, the Joker's Wild, whatever they're calling it now, night before this, that, and the other, there is nothing that is happening tonight that is going to affect tomorrow except be a really damn good test session. And it's a World of Outlaw sanctioned event. So that's a very important thing for some of those who are contracted to the master that they call their daddy. And I'm not gonna repeat their name again. But, and their daddy, it's not the World of Outlaws. It's somebody bigger than that. We talked about that, that earlier in the week in our response to Kenny Walton. But anyway, the preliminary action for the Eldora Million killed it. Will they next year, instead of King's Royal, will they do back-to-back -back millions? Two days of sprint car million to win. Two days of late model million to win. But if you do that, you pretty much have to... Um, build a whole new set of stands that will hold 30 more extra thousand people because the fan bases are so separate and you'd have to double your camper or campground size because double the amount would be attending you would have that many people for a week like that and you definitely mingle the fan bases i think that would be a pretty good idea if we're going to do millions for everybody and the streaming and everything's helping to make it a success and the 80 dollar ticket price everybody's willing to pay the 90 dollars well, let's just go back to back with Eldora Millions and do the sprint car and the late model back to back Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I'm sorry, maybe the World of Outlaws won't get there as sanctioned group, but hey, it's a dirt car event, so World Racing Group is involved. So maybe that's the potentiality going forward because I do think that the King's Royal is being overshadowed. 
I also would like to add that I saw a lot of upset or interesting comments, even by Jonathan Davenport, about the heat race inversions. Um, I, I don't think, I, I, a sigh of relief, because I've been going to late model races, but a sigh of relief for the sprint car racing world, to finally see some heat races that matter. To finally see heat races where the drivers are having to actually drive and make shit happen. And, obviously we had a bit of an invert situation at, at Husix. The track really matters in these sort of scenarios. I think Eldora you could race and pass a little bit easier than you could at Husix. I think most everyone in the world watching or driving or being involved in the sport uh, would agree with that. Um, but, I also think that some of these people who are complaining about inverts and this, that, and the other... Even when it comes to the Knoxville Nationals, we're going to hear all these people crying here very, very soon. They're going to be crying very, very, very soon about the invert and how some no-name is going to win a preliminary night. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter on these preliminary nights in a way. It does matter, but it, it doesn't, I mean, especially when it comes to Knoxville, because the points to qualify well still are very significant. And you don't necessarily have to win the A main or or be in the top three to place yourself on the front row pole or into a draw of some kind to be at the front of the actual show that matters that's paying the big money. We see this every year at Knoxville. The guys winning the races are end up lining up somewhere in the B mains on Saturday. And the guys who finished seventh or eighth who qualified well and had to race their ass off all night long to finish well. They're the ones up front. The cream always rise to the top. So heat race inverts at the Eldor Speedway made sprint car racing heat races great again. Um, it really did. Those were some of the most exciting heat races I've got to see uh, in, in, in recent memory uh, with that inversion. And it didn't affect the overall product that we got at the end of the Saturday night event. And what I mean by that is it still ended up being the best of the best up at the front. It just did. It ended up with the best drivers up front in the starting positions of the big race that mattered. Yes, the prior night they weren't in those positions in the heat race or in that position in the A main, but when the money mattered, it, it was there. It was set up correctly. Now, some people want to know my opinion of the actual race itself. I, um, a lot of people are complaining about how boring it was. And I, once you, and, and Lake Mall Elk Million last year had a very similar connotation to it where it was similarly uneventful. I, I think that Larson could have made some things happen in there late in the second half of that race. I thought Aaron Reitzel was a dark course of the entire event. But overall, there wasn't a lot of jumbling of positions. I saw Brian Brown and Kyle Larson going at it. Uh, it would have been it would have been a stretch, though, honestly, bringing up Kyle Larson. It would have been a stretch for Kyle Larson to contend for the win because there were just other car driver combos that were better than him, even though he was a hell of a driver and is still a hell of a car driver combo. I just don't think that Kyle Larson was going to have a shot at winning that race. Unfortunately, it, it ended in a bad way. No, I don't think Logan Shuhart or anybody uh, wants to beat Kyle Larson with him breaking or having a flat. They want to kick his ass straight up and show him that they're the best race car drivers in America like we know in the dirt track racing industry. So that's what I would have to say about the event last night as far as the raciness. You put those amazing drivers and you get the field set to where it's the fast guys up front and it's such a hard field to get into. It's, it's hard to make passes when everybody is that damn good and it's so close. The track was relatively widened out. Yeah, the top was a little bit dominant. You'd rather have a track be on the top than on the bottom. Obviously, you could still have a chance to throw in a slider. But everybody was just, just that damn good. They really just were that damn good. Um, the other show that I guess could have been potentially made out of that whole ordeal was Sheldon Hoddenschild, who came from deep in the sea was into a transfer in the B and then had an incident with Kel Thomas where I see a lot of people wanting to, you know, go and, and yell and throw trash at the Kel Thomas trailer. But Sheldon Hoddenschild did move down a little bit. He could, he had a lane and a half ahead of him, above him to be able to stay high and out of all the carnage of people racing their lives out to try to make it into the Eldora Million. Um, 
and it wasn't all just Kel Thomas. Yes, Kel Thomas came in across the track and got into Sheldon, but there was some things there that it looks like Sheldon could have went around everybody, just ripped the lip like he had been doing and would have been away from the Kel Thomases of the world. I see a lot of people in here saying 50-50, 101,000. It was very high. It is very high. I still think that, I believe the World 100 went to 118 or 19 million uh, last year or the Eldor, the late model. I don't know what the record actually is, but I do not believe it's 101K. I think it's it's more than that, but still an amazing thing, uh, which they're talking about the 50-50 in the comment section being open to the whole state. Why not the whole entire country? It's not the lottery. This isn't the gambling system where they're trying to take your tax money. And and, and, and anyway, it's a whole nother deal. Tony Stewart Foundation, great organization. I, I would like to comment on who actually won the race, though. And that was Logan Shuhart. Logan Shuhart won the damn race. Okay? And if there was any driver in the field that, or, or especially in contention for the win late, that it would have changed life a life for, uh, that it would have made a difference for, I think Logan Shuhart was that guy. This is the one guy, the, the, the one driver combo team. I mean, they've come from nothing. I'm sure people have been seeing, seeing the pictures of him circulating on Facebook as they're dragging his race car to the track on with a damn hatch or a damn sedan car. They got a sedan car and a flatbed back when he was racing there in Pennsylvania. So this is a guy who literally has came from nothing. This is probably the most impactful person that it could that could win this race. It's going to impact his life more than anyone else. I was down there in the pitting area. I wanted to do an interview, but hey, sometimes celebrating is a little bit more fun and, and interesting to do. Actually camping here with one of their teammates. That's kind of interesting as well. I didn't know it until last second. I'm like, hey, aren't you at the camper? Yeah. Uh -uh. But anyway, um, it's a very interesting situation where Logan Shuhart won. I believe he led every single lap. I don't think anyone passed him. We ha we did have a lack of cautions last night uh, that didn't really jumble the field up too much. The entire field was stout and fast, so even when we got to lap cars, they were uh, up to speed, and they were either getting out of the way and making it easy on the leaders. Um, so that kind of didn't jumble it up. I, I thought Carson Macedo could do something there. Uh, there was a little bit of a spurt of a hope for Brad Sweet and David Gravel, but it did just seem like Shoe Hart and Macedo were on another level, even in comparison to you crazy Larsonites who think he even had a shot. I watched Brian Brown drive around Kyle Larson. Larson got back by him, but him and, and Larson were racing. And I, I, I like Brian Brown, but I don't put him in that tier with the Shoe Hearts, the Gravels, the Macedos. They're just not up there just yet. So I just think his car was, I'm not being a Larsonite, but I do think Larson's car was not there for the talent that was willing that car. But it was really amazing to see Logan Shuhart win this race. Um, and, and obviously Brad Sweet third and, and Macedo in, in second. And and fourth, another outlaw driver in Grout. And fifth was Rico Abreu. That's what we have to really also pirouette into is this was not only just a, a, a dominating win by Logan Shuhart. This was a dominating win by the World of Outlaw Sprint Car Series roster. They brought their boys in here and put the high limit all stars, uh, superstar people who could be great, and they just picked their own races. They put them outside of the top three and without a Rico outside the top five. And Rico really, I mean, you could call him a high limit racer. What the hell is that? It's just been created this year. But honestly, this also needs to be a wake up call to maybe some of the late mall fans who don't get it. I see him cheering for high limit, and I was, and I still am kind of halfway cheering for high limit. But the skill level to be a World Outlaw Sprint Car Series driver at the top tier levels of this industry called Sprint Car Racing, you are one of the best damn drivers there are out there. And you can walk into any track, anywhere, any place, and put the regular boys outside the top five, outside of Rico Abreu, who is an anomaly this year, right now. So, this is a situation. Not only did Logan Shuhart win, but the Outlaws dominated everybody else in the Flow Racing Eldora Million. And they took Tony Stewart's money, as somebody just said. Take that Flo Stewart money. And now they're taking it back to the World Racing Group and the World of Outlaws. I, 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 somebody just said, keep hating Tater. I'm not hating. The World of Outlaws, y'all have to respect. Y'all can talk all y'all's PA shit. Talk all your Midwest this. All y'all's high limit this. All stars that. I'm just, I'm just saying, guys. 
You could talk about how you got all this, but when the World of Outlaws brings their roster, they got about five to six boys that's going to put everybody outside of the top five most of the time. They just do. They just do. They are that damn good, and they are they are skillfully training against one another all the time. Um, now, we did just see a comment by Mark Mahalik. He's congratulating. Uh, it went off the screen here. I would have continued to read it. There it is. Congrats uh, to PA's newest millionaire flag to play at win. The hardest thing to do in racing. Oh, trying to get it up here. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, hats off to the Shark Racing team. Hope you enjoyed the race last night, Chaz. I was having pretty fun, or uh, a pretty good amount of fun. Had a real big debate with a uh, Larsonite. Actually took his money because he got drunk enough uh, to actually bet uh, Larson versus the field. And I was taking that bet all day long. This guy also got into a uh, verbal altercation with somebody on if Steve Kinzer or, or Kyle Larson is the greatest sprint car driver of all time. Very interesting debates that we've been having in the stands. Uh, somebody said, nothing but respect for the outlaws. I'm talking about you hating on Kyle Larson in high limit. I'm not hating on Kyle Larson in high limit. I think they have the uh, second best. They are the, the two they are the second level of the sprint car racing industry. And anybody, and I've seen doubts with this high limit roster and people say, oh man, that high limit, the high limit roster, man, it's just as good as the outlaws, man. They're just as fuck. I mean, look at the marks and this guy and that guy and Larson and, and this. And, and I'm just saying, guys, you're not on the level of a World of Outlaw sprint car series roster. Now, can things change? Is is the High Limit Series going to come out, put out a 55 race next year, merge with the All-Star Circuit of Champions and try to do something like that? Is that on the table? Some of, some of the stuff I hear swirling around, that's on the table. Now we have to have a discussion. Are, will they sign the dotted line? Only reason the World of Outlaws are the best is because the best sprint car drivers in the country sign a dotted line every year to be told what to do. So, are we going to have a situation next year or over in the off season where flow merges with high limit? They got this new high limit presented by All Star Circuit of Champions or something like that. Fifty five race schedule and try to actually go after what the Outlaws have right now. Now, if that happens, you got to you got to debate. Will they convince some of these hitters that we're talking about right now? These top four, top five, six hitters. Will they convince them to leave? The World of Outlaw Sprint Car Series? Will that happen? Now you can talk. Larson's crew chief is the reason he's good, any good at all. I don't know. I mean, he has a very good crew chief in Paul Silva. Not going to deny that. Not going to deny that. But Carson Macedo has a great crew chief in Phil Deeds. David Gra Gravel has a great crew, ch uh, crew chief in Cody Jacobs. Logan Shuhart has a great team around him. So it's hard for you to uh, say that. I bet, uh, somebody says, I bet the house payment on Macri, anyone, anyone need a roommate? I, I don't know what that even means. Uh, I've heard some pretty interesting rumors around the 39M car. I've heard that, uh, you know, you might see a 15 on that organization next year. I'm done talking now. I'm not speaking anymore. I'm not speaking anymore. I don't really buy into most of the rumors any, anyways. That's why you don't see me talk about them much anymore. Even like when it came to the Macri situation about what actually happened behind closed doors. I think in all reality, uh, you got his truth, his or his, most time it's in relationships, his truth, her, her truth, and the real truth straight down the middle. So it's hard to get whatever actually happened in that thing, but I really just don't give a damn. I like t-shirts as good as the next person. Chaz, 10 cars could have won that race last night off the pole, admit it. I mean, it's very true. Starting position matters a lot when you're that in you know, that deep of a field, but these people bitching and crying about these heat race inversions need to wake the fuck up and realize it didn't matter did it by the time you got to the big show all the points were accumulated yeah you had to race and stress for once in your life but it didn't matter the heat race inversions the heat races on the preliminary night in my opinion was the most exciting racing of all week or all all, all of the two days of racing personally that that's what i think um uh, somebody says, I don't care. People just need to worry about themselves, and that is what the Chaz is doing. Uh, but to do it takes a lot of effort. You have to be perfect. That's very, I mean, you got to be, and a lot of these guys are perfect. That's the, that's the saying. 
Uh, the, a lot of these guys are perfect. I think that cars have to be extremely perfect. I think the top three last night had a near perfected car. I think that Kyle Larson, as his people keep uh, people keep saying, I don't think he had the car ready to uh, keep up with those guys, and, and maybe he had the skill. But I think all those top five, top six, seven guys right there had about the same amount of skill as well. Uh, some are just different in their style of racing. Um, I did want to talk about the million with the late models just a little bit. The million with the late models, I'm going to say right now, were, was very similar. I don't think there was much of a difference. There was crazy inverts, crazy racing, and the heat races, and the qualifying events. But once we got to the A-Main and the million last year, it was kind of the Chris Madden, Jonathan Davenport show. A little more side-by-side -side racing, but kind of ended up being just a kind of a train race through the bottom and, and the middle. Almost like the sprint cars was a train race on the top of the speedway. Um, so... It, it, it just changes year after year. Uh, so that's what I think about the uh, late model to the sprint car million. I still like the idea next year. Instead of putting the Kings Royal on the back of some big giant race like this and, and killing it for a, I think you need to do back-to-back -back million two wins with the late model and sprint car division. Wednesday, Thursday, pick your poison. Sprint car late model. Friday, Saturday, same situation. Million to win all week long. And then you'll have like i said you'll have to increase or build bring in temporary stands tony stewart uh you'll have to buy some more land around the facility because that would be the first sprint or first dirt track week i personally believe that you will have to fit 60 ish thousand people at the facility and and who knows how many campers there's got to be 10,000 campers or so here right now uh but anyways i want to thank the super chats that meant a lot mark mahalik and i believe uh jesse was the other one uh, big, big uh, toast of the Gatorade that I'm drinking here, trying to recover from all the stuff that I was drinking last night. I mixed, I mixed the old, the custom hooch there from the, the Shark Racing team with, with their custom apple pie. It was a really delicious sh uh, shot. Bunch of drinking at the campgrounds, obviously. But I've been trying to mix in some waters and mix in some Gatorades and, and beautiful food. We got a couple of things coming up. We got a couple of, of interesting uh, card games. Uh, that we are uh, getting involved with here at the track. A couple of different hit pieces. We got a fight basically with Kate, uh, Caitlin Larson in the stand. She started throwing popcorn at me as I was walking by and I turned around and we had us a verbal altercation that looks like it may be ending up in a race. And, and it, it, I, I think if you put me and Caitlin Larson in a race car one-on-one, -on -one, I'm gonna not, not only will I, I, I pull away from her and leave her in the dust, but if the race is long enough, by the time I come back by the lapper, I might just go ahead and drive straight through her and send her off the damn speedway into the woods. Just to teach her ass a lesson to throw popcorn at me again. Watch what happens next time, you son of a bitch. But anyway. Good content coming. Interesting content coming. Maybe more lies. I'm here alone right now. They're all at the damn cornhole tournament. But I have to talk to you people. I had a lot of thoughts about the whole scenario. Pretty much think I put every one of them out there indoor uh the coin challenge race no if we do this it's going to be in florida in the sunny sunny sh sun uh, sunshine state oh i'm losing a tongue twister uh my only question right now is do i go to pa next week do i not go to pa do i go back to the midwest and sit around or do i go to pa posse races and then do i go up to the new york uh weed sport races and then do i go to i-55 for the for the iron, iron man i ain't never been to i-55 so I I'm, I'm right now sitting here in ohio deciding on which way i should go uh, somebody says go live for the king's Royal. i'm not going to be going live at the track the mobile internet once again i started this with the mobile internet the only reason we are live right now is not because of any kind of special cell phone signal nobody here most everybody here does not even have cell phone reception in a data way they can make calls maybe but as far as loading videos or facebook or anything like that going live they're not able to do it we're only doing it right now because we are on done right tv t-mobile 5g mobile at home sorry the technical term is at home internet and it's a tower that some streaming companies use he actually runs a racing streaming company and he will utilize these to broadcast races at remote racetrack locations and i sat there i'm like hmm i could use that to go live at the track and he's like you sure could and all those race teams they could have it too at the track and all these other campers if they want you know uh, their apps on their phone to work properly or they want to watch satellite or, or Roku TV or Netflix or whatever they they need to know about this so link is in the description go there he you'll have to go through him I know I'm telling you about at home 5g internet 
you, and you can take it with you. But if you go through some of these other companies, they're going to say you cannot take it with you. No, 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 no. You'll break some laws, this, that, and the other. Hold on, we might be breaking laws right now. But he, he knows what he's doing. And he's got the Chaz Live right now at the Eldora Speedway on this badass internet. Badass internet. And I don't understand why everyone here don't have it. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's what's happening. That's what's going on. We do have some interviews coming out. We got an interview with Michael Millard. Um, we got an interview with a couple of different drivers as well. We got some really good content. Like I said, the fight with Caitlin Larson. Uh, this guy, that guy, a guy from Chicago is cussing out Dale Jr. It's a very interesting set of uh, videos we got coming out. I do have to work on them and make them. They are filmed. They're just not produced all the way just yet. But they will be coming, so stay tuned on the channel. Uh, somebody just said, go to Summer Nationals. You'll be there. I don't know. I got to figure out somewhere to stay if I go to PA. That actually rhymes. I like that. I really do. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, like the video, share the video. King's Royal tonight, Joker's Wild, night doesn't even matter. It's on the hills of the million. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know what they were thinking. And once again, I'm not going to say who they are. Tomorrow should be very interesting. King's Royal format, I really do like the format. The drivers have to bust their ass. They have to race. They can't sit back and piddle paddle or just qualify good and start in my front row spot and then get my little six lap dash and start in the front four rows no matter what because i spend all this money on this big ass uh motor and i just put it to the ground with my smart crew chiefies and i don't have to work or drive hard at all it's ruined sprint car racing ruined sprint car racing the heat race inverts the other night what worked out of the last two nights was the show in my opinion that was the show of the week so far to me was those opening night heat races and that was due to that inversion you will have a similar scenario with the king's royal it's going to be interesting tomorrow i would i would definitely tune into dirt vision tonight if you're here we're over here in row 11 campsite four five six in the north campgrounds i'm easy to find just don't vandalize me or, or choke me like that chick did last night. She, she was really pissed. Real big Kyle Larson fan. And when Reitzel went in there, and it looked like Reitzel, personally, it looked like Reitzel's car broke. It looked like it snapped on itself. But she got so mad, she came over, ran at me, and choked me. I, I, that's the third chick to choke me in the last three weeks. I don't know why y'all lose y'all's mind. What is wrong with you people? I'm not responsible for your balayages. It ain't my fault that your toenails don't look how you want them to look. I didn't do shit to the foundation of your makeup. That's your own damn fault for getting it wet and it's smearing. Leave my ass alone. Crazy ass white women destroying the world. I'm telling you, outside of no heat race inversions, crazy white women are destroying the world and most of them are, lar are larcenites. It's the damn truth and you know it. But for all you sane white women out there who think for yourselves, y'all are, are saving the world. Y'all are like heat race inversions. Exactly. Heat race inversions are smart women. I'm not going to say white because only the crazy ones are the, are the white ones. But women, all colors, can be smart. And y'all are saving the world. But anyway, we will catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Like the video. Share the video. And as always... Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, and, and the Super Chats. Really appreciated them. I'll try to let everybody know which way I will go by tomorrow. If you have any suggestions, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Send me a DM. We'll see you later, lady and gentlemen. Lady who choked me. Yeah, we'll see you later. Come and get me, bitch. Row 11, 4, 5, 6. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Bye. Or, or, bye, or, see you later.